Hi, you're watching On the Mark with Mark again. We're continuing on with our slideshow of the kitchen cabinet upgrade, and we're on to the mounting of this microwave, which was a large part of the reason for this whole project uh, happening. So the issue that we had with this microwave is that the cabinets that were here were really too deep for a microwave to be mounted underneath. If we mounted the microwave all the way back to the wall, then the microwave would stop about five inches short of the front of the cabinets. Now, the way this microwave was made, you could have the fan vented to a duct to outside, which would be fantastic, but I really didn't have provisions to be able to make that happen. So the other way you can uh, duct that microwave is it will vent to uh, a, a port on the front of the microwave that's right at the top. And when you do that, you have to have the microwave sitting out in front of the cabinet by about an inch and a half, maybe so that the vent just isn't you know, blocked by the underside of the cabinet. So I had to bring the microwave out quite a ways from the back wall. And there's also quite a bit of weight from that microwave too. So it had to be something fairly stout that I could be hanging the microwave on. The, the other mounting point was uh, there's two bolts that went through the bottom of the cabinet into the top of the microwave. So it would be held at the front, but there's a large bracket that gets mounted on the back wall that it also hangs on. So to bring that out, this is a cross section of the back wall and here's the outlet and this is the plaster. Here's the two by four. I put uh, two by sixes on the wall and I, I counterboard some holes and screwed them into the studs that were behind the stove there and then I had a piece of three quarter inch plywood that I mounted onto that two by six and then that brought the microwave out to the right distance off of the front of the cabinets. This view up here this is a, a top view here's the outlet again and then this is the same two by six right here and this is the hole I needed access to get from the outlet through the backside to get to where the cord came out of the back of the microwave oven. So, and then also I have these, this is a hole here and here so that I can get in to plug things in. So this was one of the sketches that I went by where I was trying to come up with an idea of exactly how am I gonna do this. So here's kind of where we left off from the last video. And now we've got a cabinet that's long enough to fit the under the or over the range microwave on. And uh, to get started here, I went after the wall with my star chisel because this house had plaster walls and they were, I mean, they're hard as concrete. So after locating the studs, I, uh, I chiseled my way through to the wood. So now the screws would be able to get right to the wood and do their jobs. And of course, here's the outlet that I already had put in in anticipation of this job. This is uh, uh, goes to a single breaker. It's a 20 amp breaker. I got a 20 amp outlet on it and uh, it's ready to operate the microwave. Now, as it turned out, there was only two studs behind the stove that I could hang the microwave off of. The next stud is over here, just a little ways behind the refrigerator. So it wasn't much use to me. So I've only got two here, but you'll see how with some three quarter inch plywood, uh, this turned out to be a pretty sturdy setup. Um, here's the access holes that I bored through the two by sixes so that the um, electric cord can go through here to get to the back of the microwave. And then I have a little notch in the bottom edge of these uh, two by sixes, if you look at, oh, I didn't have it in the sketch. I dreamt that up later. So here you can see that notch real well here. And also have a chamfer on the front edge of that 
two by six. Now here's the board that I put into that notch there. And that's so I have something nice and firm to attach some, uh, it's called ACM. There's an aluminum composite material that I used on the wall on the back side of the, um, behind the oven there. So here's the piece of plywood, and I forget what this plywood is called, but it's got like a layer of paper on the outside surface, the front and back. It's it's like a seven or nine ply wood. It's super rigid. It's really really some good wood. This did not come from the restore. Um, and then here's my access holes that I routed into it so that I could get to the outlet and then be able to run the cord out of the back of the microwave and get it plugged in. This little uh, rabbit along the bottom here is another place where that ACM is, is going to fit in so that uh, we get a nice uh, professionally trimmed out look. So here it is mounted on the 2x6. And I had to space these screws a little bit weird here to avoid those access holes in the back side, but uh, kind of nailed that uh, access for the uh, outlet here. And uh, so the microwave was going to get plugged into one of these outlets. And then I had the other one was open. And I thought, that's kind of a shame having that back there that can never be used. So uh, came up with an idea for a way I could use that, which we'll get to. Okay, now the ACM is in place here. And this is... Uh, painted silver. That's not the actual bare aluminum. ACM is a, it's a, a thin sheet of aluminum and then about, uh, I don't know, an eighth inch thick piece of plastic and then another thin sheet of aluminum. It's used in uh, building construction. And my brother was working at a place that uh, did that kind of construction. You'll see it on the front of car dealerships. It's available in hundreds of colors. If it looks like metal, it's probably this stuff here. It's a very uh, modern look, and you can you can form it into a lot of shapes, and it cuts on a table saw really easily because the aluminum is so thin. But this is coming up the back wall, and then it comes horizontally out towards us, and then it goes up again, and uh, there was that rabbit on the front edge of the plywood here, and it fits right into that front edge. And you can see the aluminum through these holes here. And then there's the wood up here. This is the bracket for the microwave. That's where the microwave is going to hang off of. There's a couple of like cleats sticking up there. Make it a little bit easier for you. But remember I was saying that uh, I was a little bit unhappy that there was going to be an outlet back there not being used. Well, I came up with a way of using it. So there's a cord here and it's going through the holes here and goes through the hole over here. and then. I cut a little square hole out on the bottom side here, and I put this little outlet in underneath here. So that way we could still get to that, that uh, outlet there by you know putting this little extender on right here. And then at the stove, if we ever wanted to you know have a crock pot simmering all day, it didn't have to be on the counter. It could sit on the stove. Or if we wanted to move the coffee maker over there, like at Thanksgiving, if we had a lot going on on the, um, the counters, that might not be a good example. Um, another thing might be an electric skillet could get plugged in and set on the stove. Um, if you didn't know that outlet was there, you probably wouldn't even see it. But uh, I'll admit it probably didn't get used a lot, but I thought it was a pretty neat little detail. And boom, the microwave is hung on the cabinets. This is my wife, Sue. And uh, you can see it sticks out a little bit here. That's for that vent I was talking about that happens above it. This was a great microwave, too. It's a Kenmore, which is, of course, the Sears brand. You can't get it anymore. But the, the <laughs> this is crazy, but the popcorn button on this microwave worked fantastic. I didn't care if it was a large bag of popcorn or if it was kettle corn or extra butter or if it was one of those tiny trick-or-treat popcorn bags. You pushed one button 
and it cooked it perfect every time. And it wasn't like it just turned it on for three minutes and 21 seconds or something. It actually measured how much moisture was coming off of the popcorn. And somehow off of that, it knew when to stop. And it, it stopped perfectly every time. We really miss that microwave. And one at our new house is not nearly as good as that one. We considered taking this one with us, but we thought we could probably buy another one. In fact, our new one at our new house is a Canmore, but it wasn't nearly as good as this one, or isn't nearly as good. So there it is, and you can see the underside. Nice, happy accident. The underside of this is painted silver, so it kind of matched my ACM. So I didn't know that uh, that was going to happen. I didn't really even take into account what the underside of this microwave looked like. But I did have this microwave before I started any of this construction so that I knew exactly what size it was and what I needed to do. So again, I'm really proud of that little outlet there. But you can also see what nice bends I got out of this and how easy this is going to be to clean up. I mean, there's there's not a lot of little nooks and crannies. And then I got the stainless steel coming in on this side over here. You can see the very top of the stainless is right there. So I kind of nailed that height too. Real happy with that. A little bit of the paint showing back there. That, that never did get uh, too nasty, dirty or anything the whole time we were living there. So this was a good success. Here you can see that the vents out of the top where the air it goes through those little metal filters and then it blows out right here if it's not ducted. And I would have preferred to have ducted it, but I suppose there might have been a way I could have done it, but uh, that would be a lot more work. And uh, I just love these task lights. So now we have this nice task light over our stove here. And we used to use those as just like a night light if we were at home watching a movie late or something just leave that light on and then if you want to zip out to the kitchen to refill your drink or bake some popcorn you have this nice little bit of light on there and uh there's my youngest is standing there wrapped in a blanket this is a, probably a little bit later but uh i really like these pictures even looks like daylight and uh, got that light on and sheds a little light on the cooking there. And uh, again, here's that board down the side that's really kind of uh, hemming in the, the uh, stove here. Looks kind of tight, but it, it didn't really feel that way. So this was kind of a quick one here, but that was, was not an easy... Uh, installation there i had to solve quite a few problems to get that to go in and uh, be in the right place and also look good uh, you don't even really notice right now that aluminum composite material in behind the stove there it just looks nice and clean you might think that's the wall but that part is silver it had kind of a metallic look to it with a sharp look anyway we were real happy with that so that's it for this section. Now, this side of the kitchen and the cupboards are complete. And in the next video, I'm going to turn my attention 180 degrees around. And it's the lower cabinets on the other side of the kitchen, which I'm probably leaning against them when I took this picture. Um, I wanted to put in a dishwasher because this house, like most 50s houses, did not have a dishwasher. And uh, with the three kids and all, we decided that a dishwasher would be a, a really nice thing to have. So that was the next project. So I hope you enjoyed this video and watch my next one. You're watching On the Mark with Mark. Please like and subscribe if you liked this video. Thank you.